Hello again. Hi Lilac. So now we're going to talk about the second lecture, which is where rock music came from. Okay. So is a basic understanding of music important in your course? I think it's, it's really critical because there are courses out there, and I've taken some, where um, the teachers don't teach about music. And I have a need during the course to talk about the music itself and the lyrics as well. So later on in the course, we're going to compare lyrics, for example, of Paul Simon and Leonard Cohen and Phil Oaks. I think it's important. The song is uh, lyrics put to music. Um, so I think that there are some things that if you understand, you don't have to become a musical expert in my course, but you have to learn a little bit about where music comes from. Yeah. You have a, a theory on the origin of the rock beat. Yes. Can you share it, please? I'd be glad to. I, this, this, I, I've been pondering this for years. Uh, this, this rock beat that we talked about, uh, you know, the song I'm Henry VIII, I Am, it's a really good song because it was written in about 1911, and I'm sure that we can sing it, nobody's going to sue us. Um, it was, of course, covered uh, by Herman's Hermits. And um, when I was a kid, I loved the song, and I had no idea that it was written before the First World War. Right? So um, the song in a rock beat is, I'm Henry VIII, I am. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before. Now, if you can't clap your hands on the two and the four, you know, one, two, three, four, then you can't understand really rock music, as far as I'm concerned. You have to be able to, to feel that beat, okay? Uh, which is not a regular march beat, which is on the one and three. You have to feel that rock rhythm, okay? Uh, so where did it come from? And what I think is it came from, among other things, East European dances. Um, for example, the polka, which is almost 200 years old. So polka goes... And of course, like rock music in the 60s, at least at the beginning, um, a lot of music, classical music, uh, many genres of music are actually also dance music. So polka music, because you're hopping on one foot and then the other foot, uh, it's, a, um, it's a dance music, and it also has an accent on the two and the four, and it's almost 200 years old. So... So that's polka music. So there were dances, polka and then the cheese walk, the cake walk, excuse me, and other dances that did accentuate the two and the four beat. So I have a feeling that that's somehow involved. Okay. So beyond the evolution of the rock beat, where did rock music come from? You mentioned the blues, for example. Okay, but before the blues, we have to talk about classical music, for example. Um, classical music, uh, and I teach in the class, if, if Bach were around in the 60s, he would have been able to read the sheet music of yesterday, and he would have been able to understand the harmony. Uh, and if you go back to some music of Bach or even earlier, uh, it, depending on how it's played, it can sound really jazzy or even rock. Um, and so everything goes back to, to Bach, and maybe before that even. Um, and we're talking now over well over 200 years. Um, so we talk a little bit about Bach, and then we start to talk about the different genres over the, uh, over the past, let's say, uh, 120 years or so that seem to have led to rock. Um, so, of course, there's the blues, and uh, we spend a lot of time talking about the blues um, because there are so many rock songs that are essentially blues songs. Um, a lot of uh, the Doors songs are actually blues. Um, and uh, Beatles' Can't Buy Me Love is, is, is essentially a blues song. Um, so uh, the blues is made out of three chords, and it's a 12 bar. So it's important to understand that um, a bar is a, a musical count which has inside it different beats. Uh, usually in rock music it has four beats, you know, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Um, it could also have three, it can be a waltz, like, um, like uh, the times they are changing. 
Come gather around people. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's a waltz. And there are certain waltzes that we talk about in the course. Uh, she's leaving home. So some songs are one, two, three. They're waltz songs or three, four time. But most rock songs are four, four time. Uh, four beats in a bar. One, two, three, four. Uh, so that's very important. And a blues is going to have um, 12 of these bars in it. Right? So give me, uh, give me a topic and we'll write a blues now. A topic. Lunch. Lunch. <laughs> My baby left home and didn't leave me no food. Lousy guitar player. <laughs> My baby left me, and she left me no food. I can tell that she is up to no good. So this is twelve. That was terrible. <laughs> this, this is twelve bars, right? One, two. Each one's a beat, right? Three, four, then the chord changes. Do, 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 five, six, do, 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 seven, do, 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 eight, nine, two, three, four, ten, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, twelve, and then we're back. So, so many rock songs are based on, on the blues. I, I apologize. For giving such a <laughs> poor example, but it just shows that you can spontaneously write a blues song. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's move on from the blues, if yeah. you will. Okay. Before I make an entire fool of myself. <laughs> so, what about jazz? How does that? Well, affect? jazz again. The blues and jazz. These are African American um, uh, roots in music, uh, and they're of course connected with each other. Uh, many early jazz songs are also in blues form. Uh, and um, the blues and, and jazz are also a musical styles that evolved with the 2-4 feeling. So, one, two, three, one, okay. Um, so, blues and jazz uh, in the 20s, 30s evolved uh, to have a 2-4 a, a swing feel to them. Yes. Yeah. Um, country music? Country music, well, country music is a bit different in the feel, but it's important because it also led to, uh, to rock and roll. Can't ignore country music, even though I tried to in the chorus. I'm not a big fan. Um, but one of the things uh, that is important is a kind of a uh, style that's a crossover between uh, country, blues, and jazz, which is something called skiffle. Uh, and I talk about this a lot in class because um, it's the music that... Uh, John and Paul played at the beginning um, when, uh, when Paul McCartney met, uh, met uh, John Lennon. Uh, John was playing in a skiffle band, uh, as many young Brits were. Skiffle music was very popular in Britain in the 1950s. Uh, and it's a form of, you know, Mama don't allow no guitar playing here. Oh, no, she don't. Mama don't allow no guitar playing here. So it's a kind of a country spirit, uh, also very strong two and four. Um, so skiffle was important, and country was important to the way that it affected um, the Beatles and others, partly through skiffle, skiffle. Okay. How about gospel? Gospel, again, you see, everything is connected to everything. Uh, you can't talk about gospel without the blues, uh, and you can't talk about gospel without the tradition of the African Americans. Gospel is essentially church music, and in class we have a look at some... Uh, it's some YouTube segments of, uh, of church music, and it's also two and four, uh, very strongly blues. Uh, and and um, perhaps the strongest influence of, of, of gospel is on Ray Charles. Uh, Ray Charles uh, sang a lot of uh, blues uh, and very gospel infused and very sexy music for the early 60s. Um, you remember he has that backup uh, trio of ladies, yeah. you know. Ah. Ah, ah. And for the early 60s, uh, that was very sexy, uh, provocative music. Uh, it was said of Ray Charles that he took gospel out of the church and put it into the bedroom. So, of course, we have a little bit 
We have a taste of that in the course, yes. Okay. Uh, so rock and roll? Well, rock and roll led directly to rock music. And again, rock and roll, a lot of people think that rock and roll started with uh, Bill Haley and their Rock Around the Clock, uh, which became famous because it was in a movie, uh, The Blackboard Jungle, around 1954. Uh, and um, it's very funny because you look at these old uh, rock and roll groups, uh, the bands, and they're playing an upright bass hmm. because uh, electric basses only started being popular in the late 50s. Uh, and we're part of the reason that we have rock music. Well, let me get back to that in a minute. So 1954, 55 with Haley uh, and the Comets and then uh, Buddy Holly and the Silver Crickets and uh, other uh, rock and roll uh, um, superstars. Perhaps the main one among them was Elvis Presley. But essentially rock and roll music didn't start in the 50s. The white people popularized it in the 50s. It's essentially from a different uh, classes of, uh, of uh, African-American music from the 40s, uh, jump blues and different kinds of jive. And, and, and uh, this music, uh, when it was adopted by the whites, it kind of became mainstream America, if you will. Um, Elvis Presley, uh, being a white boy who had all the uh, African-American uh, mannerisms in his in his singing. Uh, and the other ironic thing is that many of his hits were written by Lieber and Stoller, uh, two um, Jewish boys uh, who had grown up a, with, a, with a tremendous love for uh, African-American music uh, to the extent that they, they were part of this culture. Um, you know, a lot of people deride them for, from stealing music right, from the African-American community, but they actually didn't look at it that, that way. They were part of it, you know, they would sit in bars and, and uh, with, with the African-Americans, and they were just so infused with this music. But um, You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog, uh, which is Elvis' famous cover from about 1956, and um, Jailhouse Rock, these are classics of Lieber and Stoller. Both of them blues, of course. You wanted to say about the upright bass? Yes, uh, thanks for reminding me. So, in the 1950s, the bands uh, were, the, 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 the basic bands had a couple of guitars, uh, drums, and an upright bass, a double bass, the huge double bass. Um, you were limited in those kind of bands by how loudly you could play, right? The moment that people started buying the new Fender uh, electric bass, around 1957 started to become popular, that is also concomitant with the growth of the rock and roll bands. Because then, you, had, you, know, you just connected it to an amplifier and you just carried it around, right? The drums became the hardest part of the, uh, of the uh, instruments to carry around. But you could amplify it to a much greater degree. You could really, what we say in Hebrew, la tête baroche, you could really uh, give people a bang on the head with amplified music. So by the early 60s, the bands had abandoned the big contrabass, the double bass, uh, and uh, gone for the uh, electric uh, bass guitars. And of course, the Beatles you know, started playing in Germany in the beginning of the 60s with uh, these kind of instruments, ready, poised to conquer the world in 1963. All right. So the next lecture, we'll talk about what made the Beatles such a spectacular success. OK. Well, thank you very much. And thank you, Lilac. Thank you so much. You. Sorry for that blues, but you know. No, it was good. It was spontaneous. <laughs>